I'm saying this is the most quarantine that I've done. Like, I don't know what people do in their quarantine, but this is the most resting that I have had being unable to sleep. So I'm going to read it aloud. A Taoist view of woman's energy. Sexual energy provides us with an extremely powerful means to attain rejuvenation and higher spiritual energy. In ancient times, methods for working with sexual energy were regarded as top secret, especially the way to channel sexual healing energy. Textbooks such as the Handbook of the Plain Girl, a sexology book written thousands of years ago in ancient China by a known author. Demonstrate various traditional positions for sex and promoting healing, but these books do not show how to channel the energy. At the time, the books do not gonna have a. Sorry, I need that. Um, but these books do not show how to channel the energy. At this time, the handbook of Plain Girl became available. The Taoist system of channeling energy was not available to the general public, but remained a secret taught only verbally to the emperor and he others, who were not permitted to put it out into writing. We feel today that the time is right to teach people how to benefit from this transformed energy or healing love, because many misuse this sexual energy, hurting themselves and others. Our purpose in writing this book is to help people benefit from the channeling of this energy. Many couples have used the techniques described here. Are, they are no longer mysterious and they are no longer only pro the, provi the province of Taoist masters. These techniques will help you conserve and multiply your sexual energy and can increase the possibility that you will experience what the Taoists call beyond orgasm or valley orgasm. Whatever you wish to, this is one of the goals of this book. The Taoist system regards the sexual orgas organs as the roots of life, connected to all other glands and organs. Once you begin to practice the methods taught in this book, you will begin to feel the close relationship of the glands and organs, especially the pineal gland and pituitary gland, kidneys, liver, lungs, and heart as well as the sexual organs and glands. This practice, which will gradually restore sexual creative and generative energy, will bring you many physical benefits, but perhaps most important of all, transforming sexual energy into refined chi, provides a foundation <coughs> for spiritual exercises that can transform sexual energy, yang and chi into shen, a pure spiritual energy. Microcosmic orbit meditation is a way to circulate chi through the throughout the body and is the foundation of all practices in the Taoist system. This very important practice is described in chapter four and in detail in my book Awakening Awaken Healing Energy Through the Tao. This practice is followed by the meditation of the inner smile and the six healing sounds. Set forth in my book, Taoist Ways to Transform Stress into Vitality. All three meditations are emphasized throughout the Taoist system, and their mastery is essential to your successful practice of healing love. How we use energy. The Taoist sages looked at their own energy as a total unit, something like a bank account to or from which credits can be added or withdrawn. In one day, a young and healthy person earns 100% of her required energy from eating, resting, and exercise, and spends approximately 60 to 70% maintaining daily life. Well, working, eating, digesting, breathing, walking. You might think 100% energy as 100 energy credits, like bank credits, but as she ages, she gradually earns less and less even though her body requires the same expenditures, and she starts to overdraw her account by drawing energy from the vital organs, the kidneys, liver, spleen, lungs, heart, pancreas, and other glands, and finally from the brain. 
Taoist explains that the major way men lose energy is through ejaculation, while women's major loss of energy through menstruation, not through sexual intercourse. For a young, healthy woman, menstruation entails an additional energy expenditure as she carries on her daily business. Assuming that a woman starts having periods at age 12 and continues through, uh, through menopause in her 50s, fifties she could have an have as many as three to five hundred menstrual periods in her lifetime. Each month the ovaries produce an egg that contains highly perfected creative energy. A great deal of energy also goes into creating necessary hormones and the uterine lining, which provides a nest for a fertilized egg. This expenditure accounts for thirty to 40% of a woman's daily energy allotment. If this sexual energy is continually permitted or poured outward, she loses 30 to 40% of her life force energy. However, as we shall see, there is a way for her to transform this energy into vital energy for the organs, glands, brain, and bone marrow, and into spiritual energy. Principal Energy Jang. We are all born with an abundance of energy that the Taoists call the principal energy of or Jing. For a woman, Jing, the generative or creative energy is necessary to make the eggs, create the uterine lining and hormones, and keep her sexual active Jing Qi, supplemented with the energy of the air we breathe and the food we eat, permits a woman's body to endow her eggs with a life for en energy <coughs> that will be carried into the next generation. Yang is also converted into life for energy for the organs, which is called Qi. The ancient Taoists, after identifying this type of energy, observed that conserving or restoring Yang could promotely promote a longer and healthier life. Sexual energy, Yang or creative energy, is the only energy that can be double, triple, or increase even more. We can conserve or restore lost principal energy or jang if we know how if we know how to conserve, recycle, and transform raw sexual energy back into principal energy. We then will have more principal energy available to transform into chi, which in turn becomes transformed into another type of energy called shan. The word Shen means a spiritual energy. Emotional expenditures. When we're young and healthy, we spend Jiang freely, which serves us well until we reach the age of approximately 24 years. The Tao system asserts that each person is born with the good virtues of gentleness, kindness, respect, honesty, fairness, and righteousness. But as he or she grows up, all kinds of culture and social influences gradually change all good virtues. When the person begins to live under constant stress, feeling the pressure of hastiness, anger, fear, worry, and other negative emotions, this gradually eats up the principal life force, lessening the sexual creative energy. By the time one is 24, much life stress has developed and accumulated, accompanied by emotional disturbances and overstimulating sexual activity. The principal energy spent so freely in younger years begins to be transformed into negative energy, stimulating and forcing more emotional energy and increasing sexual activity. As the negative emotions drain the life force from us, robbing us from our sexual energy, they can account for a loss of anywhere from from 10 to 60 percent of our life force energy or chi. Too much negative emotional energy leaves us with less chi to work with and therefore less energy to build hormones and replace the loss of sexual energy. There will not be enough energy left with, with which to build or feed the soul and the spirit.
So the Jin down here, Qi, and then Chen. Principal energy, life force, spiritual energy. Jing, generative or creative energy. Jing, also known as Jing Qi, is the most refined energy a person is born with. It is also called the principal energy, as it is essential for carrying out the functions of the body. All of other energies in the body are dependent of Jing. Jing is transformed into Qi, or life force as it interacts with the vital organs. The conservation and nurturing of Jang energy is the basis of the Taoist internal practices. Jang is stored in all living tissue, especially the kidneys, sperm, and ova. Jang is the energy produced by sexual organs. In women, it is the energy of the ovaries. In men, that of the sperm. Jang energy, Jang energy is denser than chi, and therefore moves more slowly when circulated in the body. As yang energy circulates inside the body, the organs are revitalized and nourished. Dealing with negative emotions. Many people regard negative emotions as garbage energy that must be disposed of in some way. Since negative emotional energy is part of our life force energy, when we dispose or of or dump out this negative energy, we also dump out some of our life force. To supply the needs of our blood bodies, we draw from our principal energy. And by the time we are 40 years old, we have spent 50 to 60% of it. By the age of 65, most of us are living on the dwelling amount of this vital energy until finally we run out of it. The law of energy that is, energy cannot be destroyed, it can only be transformed. When you dispose of negative energy by dumping it out, someone else has picked it up. This anger will eventually come back to you with extra force, bringing with it fear, sadness, haste, and all kinds of stress. These emotions are also difficult to bear, so you again try to find a way to dump them. There is no end to the dumping, and the negative emotions will continue to multiply. This will greatly reduce your sexual, creative, and generative energy. To prevent this, it is important to know how to transform negative energy into positive energy. And good feelings. In this book, you will learn how to gradually restore lost sexual, creative, and generative energy by opening a certain channel that runs through your body. Once you have your channel open through the techniques you will learn, you can circulate both negative energy and the sexual energy through this channel. As these two energies are combined and circulated, a natural process of combustion changes the energy, the negative energy to life force energy or chi. This creates a positive energy cycle, giving you more vital energy to cope with your negative emotions. There is another way to deal with negative emotional energy by directly transforming it back into positive chi later in the healing Tao practice. By learning the fusion of the five elements, the second part of the Taoist meditation, we will learn how to harmonize the different types of emotional energy with the organs they have come to be associated with them. We differentiate these associations, for example, hot, heart, impatient, hasty, or cold, kidney, fearful, and become aware of their presence and appearance, as well as the different kinds of negative energy that remain trapped in our organs. We were there may later turn into illnesses. By using fusion of the five elements, we can counteract, harmonize, and transform the negative energy into positive life force. Gaining additional chi through love making. The only way to gain additional chi is to transform sexual energy that will normally be released in lovemaking by recycling it back into chi, thereby providing us with extra 30 to 40% of life force. In this book, you will learn the Taoist methods of healing love to accomplish this 
ovarian breathing and the orgasmic upward draw. These methods will help you recycle and transform a part of the sexual energy into chi. You will also learn additional exercises to help you tone and strengthen your body, your sexual organs, and guide the flow of energy throughout your body. Qi is the key to attain good health. The Taoist masters view Qi as a key to attain good health and realize that good health enables us to condense and transfer more Qi into a higher grade of energy. This enables us to have even more Qi available to build up the energy body or soul body and to create and nourish the most important thing in our life or immortal spirit. Or spirit body with our presence rate of energy expenditure we have no extra energy to accomplish this in the health field today many methods are available to help us increase life force chi such as massage acupressure ashiatsu jin shen du jin shen jiu jitsu Tai Chi Chuan, Qi Kong, health foods, herbs, meditation, yoga, and so on. However, it is the Taoist master's view that the most abundant energy and the easiest to transform into Qi is sexual energy. In the healing love practice, we will show very clearly a way to recycle sexual energy and restore it and store it. But it is most important to transform it first into chi and then a spiritual energy. Otherwise, you will gradually build it, build up too much chi, which can lead to serious imbalances. <coughs> Young people, for example, have a lot of life force energy available, but they do not know how to channel it properly. Their answer is to burn up excess energy in the fastest way is using drugs, consuming alcohol, smoking, or using other stimulants. These methods of stimulation initially give the user a great deal of energy, but they draw energy out from whatever it is available, namely the organs, glands, and brain. Afterward, this user is left with low-key energy. When he or she wants to return to the same high levels of energy, it means to return to the stimulants. But this time, the user has less energy to draw from. The high will not be the same. The result is that they must use a higher dosage or change to a more powerful stimulant. A person who is in a low-key chi state will not be as affected by a drug. Because the drug will not have much life force energy to draw from. This reason, young people become much more easily dependent upon drugs, sex, or other addictions. Transforming the abundant chi properly will eliminate the needed to burn the energy up with stimulants or participate in excessive sexual activity. Sexual energy, a creative force. The basic function of sex is reproduction. Beyond that, each time we are sexually active, we generate a lot of life force energy. When we have an ordinary orgasm, the life force pours out of us into the universe. If we can learn to redirect the orgasmic energy inward and upward instead of outward, the energy will reach a higher center of the body and we will experience a greater orgasmic experience known as a total body orgasm, or organs, or glands orgasm. An experience never felt as a result of normal sex. This is how we can create more energy, store it, and transform it into life force energy, thereby increasing our total energy. Positive energy increases sexual creativity energy. Thus far, in keeping with the teachings of the Taoist masters, we have been classifying our body's sex body energy into many different types of energy, positive and negative, sexual, life force, and so on. All of these energies have very different properties. If we identify them, we can start to control them. Transforming negative into positive and 
activating the good energies that please us. Just as negative emotions deplete our life force, reducing our sexual creative energy, cultivating good virtue increases sexual creative energy. By using the orgasmic upward draw method taught in this book, instead of losing sexual energy through ordinary outward leaking orgasm, we bring the highly charged sexual creative energy up to wrap, pack, and energize the organs and glands. In the Tao system, it is within the audience that our emotions or virtues are stored. Once an organ is restored to its original healthy condition, good virtue will emerge and can be cultivated to produce more positive energy to nurture the other organs and glands. As weak, sick organs begin to produce good energy, they will readily affect other organs, making them healthy as well. Good virtue, the heart of the universal Tao. Practicing good virtue is the heart of the universal Tao. The entire system depends upon the energy love, joy, kindness, gentleness, respect, and honesty. In the universal Tao, we believe that good nature is basic to humans, not because we are afraid of going to hell or burning eternally, returning as a lower animal form or suffering in our next life. But because we live, we believe that doing good for others is equally and immediately beneficial to ourselves. It is a simple, simple concept. When you're kind to others, you're kind to your liver, you, the organ associated with kindness. Your liver becomes stronger as you give it more chi. In the healing love practice, we return our sexual creative energy to our organs and glands to strengthen the weakened body and increase the life force. The development of good life force helps with the transformation of all anger, fear, sadness, and depression. Losing energy, pleasure, and gaining energy, pleasure. If a woman is not interested in having a baby, her sexual activity is for pleasure only. The Taoists identify two kinds of pleasure, losing energy pleasure and gaining energy pleasure. Most of us are well experienced in losing energy pressure. pleasure. We have described the brief, intense pleasure that drugs such as marijuana, heroin, cocaine, or amphetamines introduce into the system as they quickly draw and burn up life force from a person's organs, brain, and glands. This is like a bone burn fire started with gasoline. It burns intensely, and it's very gratifying, but the fuel is gone, and the fire is extinguished all too soon. The increased desire to experience the intense excitement, followed by the increased use of drugs, thrusts out of the vital energy from the organs, as well as from the brain and bone marrow. Some of the entertainment we seek is also losing energy pressure. We, when we are entertained in excess with activities such as watching television, energy from our organs is required to pay attention, and so our life force energy is drawn out toward the event we are watching and hearing. We imagine ourselves to feel good because we perceive ourselves by relaxing, thereby decreasing our stress. We do feel that release, but our vital organs are being drained of their life force by this excessive energy expenditure. This stress to our organs creates negative energy, and if, and if they do not have the means to transform it back into positive energy, we will accumulate too much and eventually our negative emotions will burst out. Even though something such as quiet music can help us relax and create a sense of a harmony in the body, too much attention to it will make our ears, eyes, ears, and nervous system lose energy to the outside. Afterward, we will continually seek new songs, movies, and shows because these things never quite satisfy our needs, but instead arouse us further into increase our needs for stimulation. 
The more we try to satisfy one or two of the senses by an outside means, the greater the need for satisfaction we create for all these senses. When you try to satisfy the mouth and tongue, the eyes, ears, and nose need something to stimulate them. It is a never-ending, increasing requirement for the senses of the senses. Multi-billion dollar business have risen to satisfy our senses. They are tremendous profits because ultimately they do not recall satisfy us or bring us true joy or happiness. If these companies created entertainment that would satisfy us for a long time, they will go out of business. The Taoists regard our organs as the body's parents and the senses as the children. When we separate, there is no harmony. When they're separate, there is no harmony, but rather disharmony and need. People search for happiness, satisfaction, and love out of sight of themselves rather than within. They listen to the desires of their bodies rather than to their minds and spirits. The more they search, the more they create the need and will never really find what they're looking for. Instead, they foster a deterioration within themselves. For example, if we eat to a tasty food but do not have an eye nor harmony in our organs and senses, our eyes will want more, like children in a toy store. We might decide to see a movie, and then the ears want to be stimulated as well. We then might decide to go to a nightclub or a bar. In the end, we might feel the need to get drunk, smoke, or take drugs. True happiness, true joy, and true satisfaction comes with inner peace. Turning sexual energy and the resultant orgasm inward is the first step to gaining energy pleasure and to, and, act to, uh, and to a control of the senses. So, turning sexual energy and the resultant orgasm in war is the first step to gaining energy pleasure and to a control of the senses. Once you have more sexual energy inside, the organs will become stronger and will then be able to control, satisfy, and balance the senses. Beyond orgasm. The ordinary outward pouring orgasm is a form of losing energy pleasure. That is... We release life force energy and we experience pleasure. In the Taoist view of the arousal, however, the fusion of all energy contributed by organs and glands with, with a highly refined sexual energy creates orgasmic energy. Rather than releasing orgasms or as in the ordinary sexual art. We learn to turn this energy inward to recycle, increase and recently and highly refine it. Throughout the practice of the life force meditation known as microcosmic orbit meditation described in chapter 4, we begin to learn how to circulate, refine and recycle the ovaries energy. In the beginning, it is important to practice daily to retain the energy within yourself. But once you feel and gain control of your own energy, you will easily experience new pleasures that are indescribable. This sensation is called beyond orgasm or valley orgasm. The concept of an orgasm that is beyond orgasm is difficult to explain because we do not have a word in Western languages or a cultural concept to express it. It is a new idea to us. Remember, however, that when the automobile was invented, few people thought it could replace the horse. Cultivation of the valley orgasm can be compared to climbing a 10,000 foot mountain. Within an ordinary orgasm, we run up 1,000 feet and run back down, and try again tomorrow and get past 1,000 feet. Most people climb the mountain this way, perhaps reaching 2,000 feet on a good day. The sensations may be limited to the genitals or rhythmic pulsations, and the person might experience relaxation throughout the entire body. 
but the energy itself is lost to the universe and can no longer be developed inside the body. Valley orgasm allows one to go farther and farther each time. When you climb this 10,000 foot mountain, you climb to the 1,000 feet rest, set up camp, spend the night. The next day, you climb farther, rest, camp, and you continue this manner until you reach the peak. There, you enter yet another realm of pleasure. Woman's sexual energy and ovarian kung fu. In the Universal Tao System Healing Love Training, we practice to gain, increase, collect, and transform ovarian to orgasmic energy. Two important practices that help women achieve this transformation. We transformation are sexual exercises called ovarian breathing, described in detail in Chapter 5, and the orgasmic upward draw. These exercises for women respond to the testicle breathing and dick draw exercises for men, which are taught in the compassion volume of this book called The Taoist Secrets of Love Cultivating Male Sexual Energy. Originally, the Taoist sexual exercises for women were called ovarian kung fu. Some students felt that this sound violent or too much like martial arts. However, the term kung fu simply means discipline or intensive work and refers to one who puts time into practice. Ovarian Kung Fu implies an expression of power and control, of the ability to take command of one's body of sexual life. It is important to understand that building up energy in your body without knowing what to do with it is dangerous. Some systems advocate releasing the energy from time to time in some way, like releasing a pressure valve. They would recommend occasional outward pouring orgasm for this purpose. The universal Tao system, however, stresses the importance of learning the microcosmic orbit, the means by which the energy can be circulated in the body and ultimately stored in a safe place, the navel, for later use and transformation into a higher form of energy. Ovarian energy develops a higher consciousness. Ovarian energy is an energy used for the development of one higher consciousness. These practices that transform the sexual energy into chi provide a foundation for the spiritual exercise that transforms sexual and chi energy into shen, a sheer spiritual energy. The Taoists call the process of cleansing the internal organs and negative emotion inner alchemy and it is this inner alchemy that restores to the organs their birthright of love joy gentleness kindness respect honesty fairness and righteousness once the organs are cleansed and healthy and you have developed the ability to transfer and transform sexual energy into life force energy your spiritual development can begin it is at this level that the generative energy of the ovaries is used in what, we, in what the Taoist calls giving birth to yourself, which means developing the spirit body from which you will attain enlightenment. The ovaries contain life force energy. As we have already learned, the Jing principle energy of a woman provides her with life force energy or qi. This chi is contained to a large extent of the ovaries. The ovaries constantly produce sexual energy. The ovarian breathing process you will learn here releases the energy produced by the ovaries and make it possible to store this energy, which as a young active quality in your body, the energy is milder after ovulation and before menstruation. As the properties of the energy change from yang to yang passive during this part of the cycle the energy is also at its highest stage of development for ab absorption and transformation ovarian breathing is a process by which the ovarian sexual energy is transformed into chi if practiced every day ovarian breathing can conserve the life force energy that otherwise would be lost through menstruation as a result of this practice, many women notice a distant shortening of the duration of the menstrual flow, 
or a decrease in cramps or other problems associated with their periods. With continual practice, menstruations may cease because all of the sexual energy is being transformed into higher life force energy. All right, almost done with this first chapter. Under ordinary circumstances, menstruation can stop for a variety of reasons, such as poor diet, depression, emotional stress, childbirth, or menopause. Since a functioning body draws its energy from every resource it has, a body requiring additional energy makes compensation to supply the energy where it is needed. A nursing mother, for example, will not menstruate because the energy is needed to produce milk. Menstruation resumes only when nursing stops. Women athletes may cease menstruation when under strict training because all of the energy has been transferred into physical fitness. Well, that's for you. Similarly, it should be noted that after menopause, many women lead very active healthy lives and usually do well in pursuing their careers because their bodies now have the benefit of the energy formally required to maintain their monthly cycles. It is helpful to understand that menstruation is for the purpose of the next generation. Energy is not used for this purpose but conserved through ovarian breathing becomes part of the vital energy of the body. Thereby, Prolonging youth and providing ample energy for transformation into a higher form of energy. I'm hot and you're so hot. That's why. The transform energy is a creative and healing energy that can raise a woman's life force potential and ultimately reverse at any time and restore to normal flow after a few months of stopping the practice. Okay, the transform energy is creative and healing higher form of energy the transform energy is creative and healing energy that can raise a woman's life force potential and ultimately increase her spiritual energy also the cessation of menstruation can be reversed at any time and restored to normal flow after a few months of stopping the practice ovarian energy the best cosmetic the ovarians, the ovaries contribute most of their energies during sexual arousal. Many other organs are also contributors. The liver, spleen, kidneys, heart, lungs, and brain, as well as the glands, the pineal pituitary, thymus, thyroid, and adrenal. All of these energies blend together to form sexual energy, a highly charged force that brings us to the point of orgasm. It is this point that our habit of losing energy pleasure must be overcome. By doing our very kung fu exercises, we, must, we can transform this energy into a higher quality energy by moving it up the spine to the brain. Because the property of sexual energy during arousal is young or active in nature, this can help you revitalize your nervous system, increase brain power and memory and stay healthy and youthful. A great secret taught by the Taoist sages to empresses and concubines, these methods enable the women in the emperor's court to maintain their beauty, health, and sexual activity for a long time. Many Taoist women consider the result of these exercises to be the best cosmetic in existence. Duration of a woman's sexual life. In ancient Chinese history, very little was written about the sexual experiences of women. Although there, there does exist the documentation of Sunu, the medial, medical and spiritual guide of the Yellow Emperor, who in almost endless list detail the voluptuous responses of women to their capable lovers. We also have read that nuns in Buddhist convents could learn exercises that will eliminate their menstruation cycles forever. 
the exercises were called slaying the red dragons. Therefore, what knowledge we know have of the duration of the Taoist woman's sexual life, passed down to us verbally from the Taoist sages, varies greatly with the outlook of lineage of the master. Some Taoist masters advise women to stop having sex after 40, due to the supposed worn out stage of the body caused by childbirth. With the ovarian kung fu method taught by the universal Tao, a woman can continue sexual activity for as long as she desires because no energy is lost. In fact, she will gain energy through the transformation of her sexual energy. Three levels of the sexual energy. To establish and maintain good sexual relationships, the energies of both partners must be on the same level. They both must be healthy physically and emotionally, and they must be on the same spiritual level. Then, when the two people are together, their energies, physical, emotional, and finally spiritual, will unite as one. Some women are unable to experience an orgasm during sex. Often, a woman will blame her male partner, saying that he does not know how to bring her to orgasm, or that he ejaculates too soon. Sex is two person happening. The energies of both people must bring their hormones into harmony. Physical level. Tuning yourself before making love is very important. How much tuning is needed difference from woman to woman depends upon her level of energy. The practices of ovarian breathing and the orgasmic upward draw strengthen a woman's vagina and direct the chi flow to her sexual organs. Many women who do not exercise the lower region, the ovary, cervix, and vagina lack chi flow and lose muscle tone. Eventually, the energy leaks out, turning the sexual region cold. Their menstrual periods may come at the wrong time. They may have premenstrual syndrome, headaches, lower abdominal age, and adverse emotional reactions, any of which can affect their energy levels, lowering their sexual energy as well as their general energy. It takes us much longer time for a woman to be aroused to her boiling point or to the point of orgasm than it takes a man to become aroused. It takes more heat and energy to bring to bring ice water to a boil just as it takes longer for a partner to arouse woman in her sexual regions is cold if a man is low in fire energy male sexual yang energy he will not have enough energy to melt the ice and will not be able to bring a woman to her boiling point for men, the recycling of sexual energy is very important, such seminal kung fu techniques as testicle breathing, sacrotal compression, and to bring draw recycle a man's sexual energy and increase his young hot sexual potential. These techniques are explained in detail by the book Taoist Secrets of Love Cultivating Male Sexual Energy. Emotional Level Often, when a man and a woman first met, they feel an unexplained attraction for one another. It may be that at the time they both have a high energy level, as well as compatible emotional and spiritual levels, it is as if a strong magnetic force has drawn them together. Often, the stress of marriage or family life drains the energies, gradually wearing out their magnetic forces until no longer is a strong attraction between them. During this period, the man and woman may seem far apart and alone. <coughs> we see many people starting out in the practices of the microcosmic orbit and how the secrets of love become aware of this and do regular exercises to increase their romantic forces, improve the foods they eat and make an effort to reestablish a close feeling with her partner. Orgasms come much easier then. <coughs> a spiritual level. 
If a couple can find time to meditation together, sit with each other, or do palm to palm touching, they will quiet down and be able to feel the energy of their partner. You can still exchange energy with your partner, even if he is slow in energy and unable to move it. You can expand your microcosmic orbit into his. He can do the same with you so that you can help one another move the energy. If, one, if he is at low mood, you can assist him by sending him your smiling energy. If you learn the fusion of the five elements, you can actually absorb his and negative emotions and fuse them to return good life force back to him. He can do the same for you. A good sexual relationship can involve many other factors, but you must have a good foundation like fine wine. The goal of Taoist meditation. Long ago, it was discovered that the most effective way to observe the subtle working of the Tao and the inner nature of man and woman was through quietening the mind in seated meditation. It was a practice of seated meditation that revealed the existence of Qi as a subtle electromagnetic force flowing within the body. The pathways the Qi followed revealed the meridian system of the body. The three parts of the body. Through meditation, the early Taoists developed a greater refinement and increased awareness of the body as a composite of three parts, the physical body, soul body, and the spiritual body. The early Taoists studied the, these three bodies to differentiate the nature and purpose of each one. Unlike the other meditative traditions of Asia, which cultivate the soul and spirit at the expense of the physical body, the ancient Taoists considered all three bodies important. They found a way to climb consciously into this spiritual realm, and equally important, to climb back to the physical world to be creatively active here. Developing the physical body <coughs> The novice in the Universal Tao system begins with a wide range of exercise to develop the physical body into efficient and healthy organism, capable of living peacefully in the world, yet free of the tensions of and stresses of ordinary life. The aim of the first level of practice is to develop self-awareness in the physical body and is to in its energy relationship with the environment and other people. At this level, one learns to heal oneself by sensing and directing the circulation of chi within the meridian system of the body, the microcosmic orbit meditation. The practice of loving self-awareness generates a positive energy condition in which greater respect and love for others radiates constantly without conscious effort. The healthier the body is, the more chi it can produce and transfer into spiritual energy. By practicing in this life to transfer chi into spiritual energy, we give birth to ourselves, raise our souls and spirits, and educate them. The first level of Taoist practice is accomplished by utilizing the microcosmic orbit meditation, six healing sounds, inner smile, fusion of the five elements, Tai Chi Chong, five elements, nutrition, and iron shirt Chi Kong. As awareness of the physical body develops, increased levels of energy will become available as one learns to control and transform sexual energy through ovarian kung fu or seminal kung fu practices. Giving birth to self, the soul body. Giving birth to the self, the goal of Taoist meditation is awakening the part of oneself that perceives and acts free to the boundaries of environmental education and karmic condition. This birth of self is not a symbolic image or poetic metaphor, it's an actual process of energy conversion that leads to the formation of a subtle body within the capacity to develop reasoning, feelings, and will of its own. That's it, chapter one.